Hello friends, welcome back. In this video, we are going to understand one of the important concepts from the Lean Six Sigma that is dealing with how to identify the weakness or weak points in the organization or weak points in your product or processes because of which it is not achieving its targeted performance. The tool is gap analysis. We are going to understand this gap analysis with the help of practical example so that you can understand it in a better way. So let's begin to learn this important concept. As usual, let's start with the why first. Why do we need to learn this gap analysis? The performance of a company may suffer if it doesn't make the best use of its resources and capabilities. And because of which, we need to use the gap analysis. Gap analysis compares the actual performance of a company against the potential or desired performance. And after this comparison, it allows to determine if a company meets the desired level of performance. If yes, then it's absolutely fine. We can investigate and we can continue the good practices. But if it doesn't, then we need to find the ways to improve it. And for that purpose, we are using this gap analysis. I'm going to explain in detail what are the process steps for it and how we can achieve the desired performance. Now, before that, let's understand when we are talking about the gap analysis, a gap analysis is essentially looking at three key elements. To understand these three key elements, let's look at this graph of growth versus time. The first element is the current state. The current state or it is also called as a current situations. So you need to ask the question, what is the current state for your organization? Or if you are looking for the product or process performance, then what is the current state for your product or process performance? Then the next element is the required state, or this is also called as future state or ideal situation. And the third important element is what needs to be done to get from the current to required state or bridging the gap. In other words, we need to identify what is the difference between this future state and current state? This is also called as gap. Now, what is a gap? The gap is what separates your current situation from your ideal situation. So this is the difference between what is the required state that you are planning against what is your current state. When we are going to introduce this gap analysis, what are the benefits of it? So it is having the multiple benefits. The first and most important benefit, it improves your product quality and product performance. It also optimizes the cost so that you can have the more profit. It is also focusing on optimization of other resources like time and it is also helping you to improve your efficiency so that you can deliver the good quality of product to the customer in shortest period of time. And at the same time, you are having the highest profit. After understanding what are the benefits of this gap analysis, let's look into some of the different types of gap analysis. There are mainly four types of gap analysis are there. The first one is performance gap. As we had already seen, what is the definition of the gap? It is a difference between what you are targeting against what is the actual situation. If you are talking about the performance gap, this is again the difference between planned versus actual. Or in other words, we can say actual versus expected performance. The second type of gap analysis is a market gap. In this market gap, we are talking about what is the actual versus budgeted sales. The third type of gap analysis is profit gap. In this type of gap analysis, we are comparing what is the actual profit that we are having versus what is the targeted profit. And the last type of gap analysis is a manpower gap. It is a difference between actual number and qualified and quantified performance of workforce versus that which is required. These are the main four types of gap analysis. Now, the performance gap and market gap can be divided into other subparts like performance gap is having the other three types like improvement gap. As the name indicates, it is talking about what is the improvement that you have planned against what is the improvement that you have gained. The other type is expansion gap and diversification gap. There are also more types of market gaps like product line gap, distribution gap, usage gap and competitive gap. Now, depending on what type of gap analysis you are using, each type of these gap analysis approaches will result in its own unique solutions. So it is totally depending on what is the solution or what is the real thing that you want to improve. 
Up to this point, I'm sure you have got the complete clarity about what is a gap, why we need to do the gap analysis, what are the different types of it and what are the benefits to it. Now let's go into the detail that how we are going to conduct this gap analysis. How to do a gap analysis? The gap analysis process can be broken down into four simple components. The first one is what is a current state? The second component is what will be the future state? And as we had seen, the difference between these two components is called as a gap. And this is our third important component. The last component is very important to bridge this gap or to move the current state to the future state. And for that purpose, we need to take the actions. The fourth component is improve. Let's take an example to understand this gap analysis process or how to conduct this gap analysis in a most effective way. The example is the food takes too long to be served. Now let's apply the gap analysis process on this problem so that we can solve this problem. As we had seen, it consists of four important components for the gap analysis process. Current state, future state, identify the gap between these and then plan the actions to move the current state to the future state. Now, in our example, what will be the current state? The food takes on average of 14 minutes to be served. Whereas the future state will be the food should be served within 11 minutes of ordering. So what is the gap between these two states? 3 minutes. To improve this gap of 3 minutes, we need to follow the below actions that are decided to improve the serving time. Now what are these actions or what are the actions that we can plan? Like we can implement software to manage orders in kitchen. We can modify the SOPs to optimize the process or we can also keep the ingredients ready for frequently ordered foods. So by implementing these three important actions, we can eliminate the gap between what is the current state and what will be the future state. From this example, I'm sure that you have got the complete clarity about gap analysis and how to use that gap analysis in real life. This gap analysis is not only applicable for the organization, product or process performance. You can use this tool at anywhere, including your personal life. You will also get the significant results by application of this tool in your personal life as well. This is all about the gap analysis and let's see the another important concept in Lean Six Sigma into the next video. At the end of this video, if you found this information useful, then please do not forget to like, comment and subscribe. If you want to learn Lean Six Sigma and Minitab most effectively and practically, then please visit at vijasabe.co slash join or successfulcareerhub.com slash courses. One more important thing, if you want to support me or appreciate my efforts, you can also join my YouTube channel by clicking the join button at my YouTube channel. By joining this YouTube channel, you are not only supporting me, but also getting an access to the perks that can help you in your career goal. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.